So you're looking to either upgrade your storage technology to the fastest PCIe 4.0 tech, or maybe you're just curious on how it actually works. How much faster do you actually go with this type of technology? You clicked on the right video because today I am upgrading my SSD technology from the standard 500 megabytes per second type of technology, 2.5 inch SSDs to the new SK Helix Platinum P41 M.2 drive, which bumps about 7,000 plus megabytes speeds, techies and gamers. So if that's the case, then you're in the right place. Don't rhyme with ace. What? Stop. What up, techies and gamers? It's your boy, Jermaine with Tech Toys and Gaming. And in today's video, I am upgrading my old school old school SSD to the new SK Helix Platinum P41. And I am hoping to just supercharge my gaming and overall PC performance because my editing rig was pretty outdated. Not only am I upgrading that SSD, but I am also installing a third party heatsink by ID Cooling because from what I read online, these SSDs can get pretty hot and I would suspect so because these things are blistering fast, boasting 7,000 megabytes and over per second. Now the motherboard I'm installing it on, which is the Gigabyte Aorus B550M Pro series motherboard comes with its own SSD cooler, has its own heatsink. However, it is not the right size heatsink. Now the heatsink it comes with is made for the 22110 sized M.2 drives, but uh, I won't need that. So I got something that's more compact that actually has a better cooling system overall. And it is ID cooling M.2 drive heatsink, which comes with an aluminum casing. And it also has this interior copper piping to help dissipate that heat coming from your SSD. And with all this combined, you should get a nice cooling system going because your SSD will be sandwiched right in between. So you're getting cooling from both ends of the actual heat sink. So not only am I upgrading my SSD, but I'm kind of going all out. I will also be upgrading my old MSI Z97 Gaming 5 Intel motherboard rocking an old i7-4790 processor and installing a B550M Pro P motherboard, not to mention a Ryzen 7 5800X. We will be keeping our EVGA 3060 Ti XC graphics card because, well, that card is just good. So that will go into the new build with the new motherboard. And yeah, that is just going to take it to a whole other level. If you want any of this stuff that I'm mentioning today in today's video, by the way, Check the link in the description. I have left all that stuff there in case you wanted to use any of the hardware that I am using in this video. With that, let's look into how exactly we are going to install this SSD. So consider it kind of a little bit of a tutorial out there for you guys who've never probably installed an M.2 once in your life. You're going to get a little bit of a training wheels. What? So first and foremost, what you're going to need to begin with to actually be able to use a PCIe 4.0 SSD drive, right? M.2 drive, you'll need to actually have a motherboard that supports it. Along with installing your heatsink, you're definitely going to need some thermal tape. A lot of these heat sinks that you purchase third party actually come with these thermal tapes, right? You can buy it separately or you can just buy the heatsink itself, which should technically come with thermal tape. Looking at the motherboard itself, you can see that it has that longer SSD heatsink type installed, but we're not going to use that. We're going to go ahead and remove that bad boy, install our own third party heatsink. So we'll just effectively unscrew it with that tiny little screw and take it off. And we're going to actually install the heatsink, but we're not going to install our drive like this. Typically, we would install it like that, just plug it in, but we're going to actually utilize this 0M15 heatsink, which is nice and chromey, right? Nice and reflective, modern looking. So it'll look nice reflecting off of your RGB, uh, if you have RGB in your case. And you, you can see it comes with top and bottom heatsink. You basically sandwich it in between, right? So to install, you would effectively just unscrew all four screws on uh, both sides. And once you do that, you just pull it apart. You can see that it comes with this thermal tape internally installed already. And on the top piece, there is also a piece of thermal tape as well. So we'll peel off the thermal tape, which is the base piece of the cooling system, place our SSD 
nice and flush onto the base. And if you look on the back side, lines it up properly so that way the screw mount shows as well as the pins. Oh, this looks nice and chromey peeling off that plastic. And if you look at the bottom of this, we'll also peel off that thermal tape cover and we are going to sandwich it right on top of our SSD, aligning the screw holes, right? That's where you're going to screw it. Give it a nice little press, not too hard. And this is what it looks like when it's mounted. Screw in your four screws to this and mount it onto your motherboard. Make sure you get that nice little click in when you press it and you are mounted. After that, you just go ahead and screw in your mounting screw, which is very tiny. Be careful, make sure your screwdriver is magnetic and you're all set. And this is what effectively what it will look like in your case. This is what it looks like in mine. Yeah, it looks nice and chromey and modern and nice and reflective when you have that nice RGB going on inside of your case. Pretty simple, right? One, two, three job. Uh, if you have any problems installing it, or you're not sure about anything I just showed you there, just leave it in the comments. I am more than happy to answer any questions. A lot of things I didn't mention, of course, I just breezed through it, but that effectively is the basic steps you need to install your M.2 drive with a heatsink onto your motherboard. With that all installed, I went ahead and did a couple of little quick speed and temperature checks just to see what we are getting out of box with this particular modern blazing fast SSD. Let's see what kind of temperatures we're bumping out of this when we're doing a full on speed test. And as suspected, out of box beyond what the manufacturer states that this hard drive can actually do, which is 7,000 megabytes per second. As you can see here, I am doing 7,400 megabytes on the read speed and 6,600 plus megabytes per second on the write speed. Blisters in my fingers just looking at it. What? While running this test, which took about five to eight minutes or so to complete, you will see that I was only able to get this up to about to 42 degrees Celsius max. That is correct, Tech Easy Gamers. This thing is still running pretty cool, running at 100% utilization, and you will see that the temperatures stay pretty regulated. And if you are interested in learning a little bit more about this SK Helix Platinum P41 M.2 drive, boasting 7,000 plus megabytes per second, I did a full review on that recently. And if you wanna see that, check the review right here. Here I go through the unboxing and a little bit of a discussion of what it takes to be ready for this kind of SSD drive. All right, Tech Easy Gamers, and with that, I'll see you in my next video. Later.